Hey guys, today I wanted to film my next raw advice video. I got a lot of questions in my last ones. I did not film a tutorial on this, but I filmed a tutorial similar to this and I will post it in the description of this video. The difference is I'm wearing contacts in this video. I'm wearing the Desert Dream contacts from Desio and um, pretty much everything else is the same other than I did use a piece of tape underneath here to make the cut even cuttier. If you guys don't know what raw advice is, it is a video where I tell you to ask me any questions that you guys might have. You ask them in the comment section of this video and I answer them for you. I answer them to the best of my ability that I can. I am not like a licensed professional or anybody that is qualified to give advice, but I still do it because uh, I will be honest with you no matter what and tell you the truth. So ask any question you have, doesn't matter the topic, doesn't matter. First question is from Bonnie Carter. The question is, I'm not really comfortable with my current relationship. I think it might be my fault. I've been with my boyfriend for almost three months now and he's easily the most attractive person I've been with so far. I'm not sure why, but this makes me a bit self-conscious, especially since we're so open with each other about our past relationships and he showed me on his phone that he has plenty of pictures of girls he's been interested in, like screenshots of the Snapchats that they've sent. And they're all extremely beautiful. It seems silly to worry about these photos when I'm telling you about them, but he also pokes a little too much fun about too often about how I look when I don't have makeup on. For every one time he says I'm beautiful, he's made three comments about my skin. I wonder if I'm being too sensitive or if this might be his way of giving me hints that he's not 100% attracted to me. So you've only been with him for three months, which means it's kind of difficult in the beginning of the relationship to be like, let's sit down and let's have a talk. Because if I had that happen in my relationship that I was in now, granted I'm married, so it's a completely different situation, but if my husband made little comments about my body and had pictures of pretty women on his phone that I felt were more beautiful than me, then I would be pretty annoyed, um, for one. I would be right in the same boat as you. If he makes comments like that to you, the first thing I would do would be to tell him, do, do, you, find, you, know, do you find me attractive? And then if he was like, oh, well, yeah, but, uh, you know, there no, should be no but in a relationship. Granted, you guys have only been together for three months, so you're still in like the honeymoon phase of a relationship where everything's new and exciting and still scary, like are we gonna stay together? We don't really know. I don't take well to people telling me anything about me, so when people comment on me and try to tell me things about myself, like if he was making comments about my skin, for one, I would get really self-conscious, but for two, I would kind of look at him and be like, what, why are you with me if you feel these ways about me? Now, your guy's being a little bit more nonchalant about it where he's sitting there and making little comments here and there. He tells you you're beautiful. He obviously thinks you're beautiful, otherwise he wouldn't be with you. Guys probably aren't gonna be with you if they don't think that you're attractive. It's a tough situation though because you don't wanna like piss him off or you don't wanna like accuse him but at the same time, he probably shouldn't have pictures of other girls on his phone if he's actually your boyfriend. So what I would do is I would be like, I'm a confronter though, I confront people about things, so when I feel that they're either being wishy-washy, if somebody made a comment about my skin, I'd be like, number one, fuck off on my skin. Number two, if you have a problem with it, then go elsewhere. I'm that type, I'm like, not the threatener, but I'm always like, well fuck it up, find somebody else then. Get the pictures of the other girls off your phone, because if you're with me, you're with me, and I, this is that type of relationship. Confront him and talk to him, but if you're uncomfortable doing that, uh, I get why you feel self-conscious from your YouTube image. You look gorgeous, so I would say he can shove it with the comments about you. Um, I would say he wouldn't be with you if he didn't think you were beautiful, but if, you know, there's always going to be better looking people out there than us. There is. I mean, I can slap on all the amount of makeup I want, but I'm not going to look like Adrian Lima or fucking Mila Kunis. That's not the same as keeping pictures of girls from Snapchat and making you feel inadequate in your relationship. So I would say he needs the uh, to have a little reality check and to know you're with me, so either they all go and you stick with me and love me for who I am and the skin that I have and my body and the way that I am, or you can go and be with those girls from Snapchat who obviously are important enough and beautiful enough to keep on your phone and... Uh, so it's either treat me good and stop making comments like that about me or go be with one of those girls from Snapchat cause that's making it rain so probably don't make it rain. DB Alexander asks, what is your all time favorite Disney movie and why? That's the hardest question of life in my opinion. I cannot choose just one. 
I cannot choose a Pixar movie. I loved Big Hero 6. Love. Loved WALL-E. Um, I'm acting like this was like the hugest question of life, but you asked me what my favorite Disney movie was. I don't know! I don't know what my favorite Disney movie is. I can't think of it. I love watching Ratatouille. It's not like my favorite movie of all time, but I, I love that movie. It's a really good background movie, and it's one of those movies I've seen a million times. So you ask why? That movie to me is like, I can throw that on in the background, and it just is a good, it's like my soothing movie. I don't know why. It's just, it's very like neutral. There's not a very big bad guy in the movie. He's really not even that bad. I love Cars as well, which you wouldn't think I would like, but there's something about the deserty atmosphere and like when the cars like light up the town and it's like life could be a dream if only all my precious plans would come true like that part of the movie makes me so happy I don't know why but I love that movie and Wally -E is such a good movie but it makes me cry um, I cry at robot things that's a weird thing for me Robot-y things they always make me cry one two three Charlene asks you mentioned not going to college and that you finally found what you want to do in life. I've been wanting to go to college for years and if, if it's not financial burdens, it's childcare as I'm a mother of two. So it seems like impossible for me and I'm having a hard time to try to figure out what to do with my life. I'm 25 now and I feel like I should already have things figured out. Any advice? No. At 25, I mean, I'm 27 now and I still have... Uh, the things I figured out are that I want to be like an entrepreneur. I want to grow my online presence as a YouTuber, Instagrammer, social networking, makeup artist, that's what I want to do and I'm working towards that but until now I'm working the job that I like and I feel comfortable at. I have no, I had no clue and still have no clue if I would, were to be forced to go back to school today I wouldn't know what I'd want to do. So don't waste your time if you're unsure of what you want to do, if you have no idea. Yeah, granted, it's it's expensive, it's hard, you have kids. If you really want to go back to school and it's something that really interests you, certainly go. But find something that you want to do because you don't want to waste a bunch of money. I know a lot of people that went to school for like art and they're working at Starbucks. It doesn't have to be like a university. If you want to be a makeup artist, you just go to school or be self-taught like I am. I, I have no formal training whatsoever in makeup artistry or anything. If you want to uh, be a welder, if you want to fucking do hair, if there's lots of things that take minimal school. If you want to be like a technician of some sort, go to a technical college. Those are things that that take a short amount of time but get you a good payout. Aloha Amy asks, Hi Christy, my question is with guys, what does hanging out mean? I know a guy from a class who friended me on Facebook after the class was over asked me via... What? I know a guy from a class who friended me on Facebook after the class was over and asked me via message if I wanted to hang out. We decided to go on a hike and he offered to pick me up, open the car door, and offered his hand to help me through some rougher spots on the hike. I was nervous and brushed this off. Now that I write this all out, it seems obvious that I was tricked into a date. But my friends have mixed feelings on what this was. What do you think? How do I know if a guy is interested in me if he's more of a shy person? Also, what are some ways I can show that I'm interested and that, that are more subtle since I can be shy and awkward around guys I like? Thanks. That sounded like a date to me. I mean, it's, it's generally, if I just want to be friends with somebody, I'm going to use myself as an example here because I can be a flirty person. If I want to be friends with a guy, um, I am friendly. I do like, I'll like nudge his shoulder and stuff, but I'm not gonna offer my hand. I'm not gonna open the car door for him. I mean, granted, I'm the woman, um, so that's generally, that would be kind of weird. I think that what you explained sounds like a date to me. He messaged you. He added you. He took you on a hike. He helped you through the rougher areas. He opened the car door for you. That's a date. Maybe it wasn't a date, but at least he's trying to tell you he wants to go on a date with you, in my opinion. He wouldn't have done that had he not been interested, unless he's just really wants to be friends, but that's pretty rare in my opinion. I would think that from the way that you explained it, it sounds like for sure he totally wants to go on a date with you. Subtle ways you can let him know that you like him, um, text him. <laughs> not too often, but just, you know, let him know that like, or like, oh hey, want to hang out? Ask him if he wants to hang out. If he's like, yeah, that'd be great, then you know he likes you. If he's like, nah that he's not that interested. Being gently flirty with each other, I mean, you know you know how, you know how that looks, like, like, oh, huh, you know what I mean? I don't know, I'm not gonna like flirt with you on the camera, but I would say find interests that you guys have, talk a lot, and, and I mean, if he doesn't pick that up, then some, some people just don't pick up the hint, uh, but I would certainly say that you can find ways to show him that you like him by just, um, 
subtle body movements and things like that. If you guys hang out again, I mean, like, nudging him and, uh, you know, saying like, oh, the next time we hang out, or, you know what I mean? You, you, can, you can pick up on it. You've seen enough movies to know, like, what... Don't be, like, overly, like, hee 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 I mean, I, I don't know. I think that kind of comes off as weird. I don't know how old you are, but um, I would say just be totally honest and real and normal around him, but also show interest, and I think he'll understand that you're interested. Summer Shine X asks, how do you handle period pain? I've used to never get them, but recently they've been so bad on the first day. Do you have any tips, especially tips on handling them at school? I don't handle it well. I literally, like, cry and curl up in a ball and want to die. Day one and day two are like crampy hell for me. I don't know if you're opposed to taking medication, but if you're okay with taking an over-the-counter medication, Pamperin or Midol, those things work really well. Heating pad and laying in the fetal position are the only other things that help me. I would just say, if you are okay with taking over-the-counter medication, I was against it for many years and didn't do it. And when I did do it, I realized, holy shit, it works like 15 minutes, you you have like almost complete relief if you take like Pamperin or Midol. You feel so much better, it takes the bloating away. I'm not, I sound like a commercial for those medications, but I'm serious, it, it, is, it is a godsend. Other than that, God help you. I'm sorry to laugh at this comment, but it's actually like the way you worded it is so funny. I just love it so much. MJ Zisu Zisu says, I was wondering if you if you wear contacts or glasses. I swear every makeup tutorial I see for glasses is just suggestions on placement of makeup that looks good on people who wear them. Not, hey, I can't fucking see either. Check out my finished product after I put on my makeup blindly videos. I swear every day is like a no mirror makeup challenge for me because my vision vision is such shit. I'll put on my glasses when I'm done and my foundation isn't blended, my eyeliner isn't even. It's really frustrating. I can see my I can see my face without them, it's just really blurry. Unfortunately, I no longer wear contacts, so that's not an option. Do you have any tips? That's hard because no, I don't wear contacts. I only wear these colored contacts sometimes just because I like the color that they make my eyes. Can you put your glasses on and put your brush like up around them? Can you like do that? Because that might be, well, for one, wear your glasses when you put your foundation on. Just move them up to the side to blend up here. But I would wear your glasses when you put your foundation on and then just wipe them down if they get anything on them. My friend Melissa from Living Richmond has glasses and she does her makeup amazingly. So I would definitely go ask her. I'll put her description or her uh, channel in the description of this video. Comment on something because she does her wing liner. She does her uh, smoky eye and stuff and she wears glasses. But she may be nearsighted so a mirror is just fine. Like you said, you can see your face but it's blurry I would definitely just try doing it with your glasses on try holding the brush up behind the glasses maybe hold them out a little bit and then do your blending because girl I'm sorry but that fucking suck I'd be like oh what a shitty situation but oh, man that really sucks so I that's the best I have for you because I've never worn glasses so I don't know the lollipop 27 asks Hi Christy, I've never commented on videos before, but I really need some advice. I am 16 and my girlfriend and I started dating over a year ago. We didn't tell her mom about us at first because she was just afraid and didn't feel she was ready. About 11 months in, her mom got suspicious since we hung out all the time and she found out about us. She was much more okay with it than we expected her to be, which was awesome. In the beginning, she still let us stay over at each other's houses. Recently, she decided it was inappropriate. My girlfriend and I have been sleeping together for over a year and have grown very used to it. So I guess I have two questions. Why do you think her mom did that just suddenly and said no? And what do you think is an appropriate age to sleep over at a significant other's place? Thank you, and I hope you answer this. I love your videos. I think you're an amazing person. Well, God, thank you so much. Uh, here's my answer. I'm going to go back to my 15-year-old self. I lost my virginity when I was 15. Um, I, I hope you're, when you say sleeping together, I, I assume you mean you're having sex with each other. Maybe not. Maybe you're just sleeping in the same bed as each other, but I'm going to go off of the whole sex thing. I lost my virginity when I was 15. I said I would wait till marriage. I was one of those people. Yeah, yeah, 15. Nah, just done. Um, coming from my 27-year-old self who now can picture what a mother feels like with her children, would I want my 16-year-old staying the night at a guy's house? Fuck no. But I can tell you that... 16 year olds will have sex. Be safe. That's the only thing I can tell you. Wear protection. 
birth control, protection, no babies, no babies. Her mom probably changed her mind because she realized it was getting serious. She had the fear in her mind of babies and sex and she probably didn't quite think about the thought that her young daughter would be having sex at such a young age and then when it finally clicked in her mind she was like, nope, this is inappropriate, I can't handle it, I can't think about it, or maybe she... I don't know. I understand it. Um, because sometimes people are like, oh, I want to be the cool mom, and then they're like, no, 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 this isn't right. Um, I don't have any kids, so I can't tell you personal experience, but I probably see where she's coming from. Do I think you guys are too young? I think you're at the prime age of when everybody wants to be staying the night with their significant other, and when everyone wants to have sex with everybody. And I think it's normal, and I think it's fine. I think as long as you're practicing safe sex, and you're not spreading STDs around and you're not getting pregnant and you're on birth control and you're being safe and you're in a monogamous relationship, I think it's fine. And I'm only saying this because I swore to myself when I was 15. I said, when I get older, I'm going to remember the way I felt now because I don't really be, want to be one of those old people who preaches to young people and I hate to do that, but I totally turn into that. I was doing it. I was sleeping over at my boyfriend's house. My parents didn't like it either, not even one bit, but they understood that I was going to do it anyway because that's the most hormonal point of your life. You're gonna feel urges and like you wanna have sex all the time. I did, I was like a sex craze maniac when I was 15 and 16 and 17 and 18. I think it's totally normal and it's a normal feeling to have and I think that eventually they're gonna have to understand that at that point in your life that's what you guys are doing and you're gonna do it anyway and you've been doing it anyway so as long as you guys aren't like get you know get into bad situations I think I personally think you're gonna do it anyway so it might as well Jenny Lover asks do you ever think of getting a job doing makeup not on YouTube believe me I don't want you to leave YouTube ever but I could see you doing makeup for some big movie production. You are amazing. Thank you so much, Jenny. Oh my God, you're so sweet. You're making me blush. I can't blush through all this makeup though. Yeah, I don't, no. I, I'm going to try. I'm doing a friend's makeup for her wedding in May. Um, I will certainly do people's med me med up. I will certainly do people's makeup for like events if they want me to. Um, maybe when I start getting more confident working on other people, I definitely will. Uh, I'm only now just starting to become confident in my abilities, and I think that's mostly just because up until this point, I felt like I'm learning, and now I feel like I've finally learned it. So now I'm just honing my craft and perfecting my technique. So maybe one day, but I don't see myself like advertising myself now. Okay, this is a lot of, another long one. So what you 3114. <laughs> Hi Christy, I've recently found you and I love your videos. Thank you. So quick FYI, I'm divorced with two kids, seven and 10 years old. The divorce was hard on all of us, but we have come a long way. The kids still see their dad throughout the week. Years later, I am engaged with the man I've seen for three years. He is so amazing in everything I've wanted. The first time I saw him, I knew he was the one for me, and he feels the same. We are in our early 30s and have been engaged for two months. Him and my children love each other. He is so great to them. I'm so lucky. My question is, his lease is up in October, and my lease is up in February. Should we each sign new leases and live apart a little bit longer, or should we start living together? My kids are aware and comfortable with us living together, but I'm coming from a divorce years ago. I kind of don't feel comfortable living with a man who I'm not married to yet and is not the father of my children. But I do think it would be good for us all to live together under one roof before we take the huge step in marriage. What are your thoughts, and how can I get over that thought? Thanks so much. Take care. And also, what size is your septum ring? Is it like 8 millimeter? Yeah, it's 8 millimeter, I believe. 8. Mm-hmm. 8 millimeter. That is a tough one because it's all personal preference. I don't know if it's if because of religion is why you don't want to move in with him before marriage. In my opinion, I think that living together, even though it goes against religion, if you are a religious person, if that's the reasons why, um, I think it's really important. I lived with my husband before we got married, and I, I literally attribute that to the re reason we're doing so well now because I got to learn his living habits. I got to learn what he was like. I got to learn what taking care of him was like or him taking care of me. I know everything about what the nuance of our relationship was going to be like before we moved in together. So that was really not, or before we married each other. That was really nice. We lived together for years before we got married. Um, I would but you don't have to because I would. I would because I think that it would even make the transition after that a little bit easier, 
But if you think that you don't feel comfortable living with him before you're married, well, certainly don't do it. Um, but do remember, if you don't feel comfortable with it now, hopefully you'll feel comfortable with it afterwards. Um, I honestly don't think I could have married Zach had I not lived with him first because I probably would have married him and been like, this is what you're like. I learned a lot about him when we started living together. That's when you realize all the little things you thought were cute about him become your biggest annoyances <laughs> with them. Uh, I think it's completely 100% up to you though and what you feel comfortable with. And you're getting married to him so you're going to live with him anyway. But if it's for religious reasons, I would say just do what feels right to you. I did it and I, I don't regret it by any means. 123 Charlin asks, how do you keep your hair so healthy looking? I love your videos and I love your attitude. You got me addicted to Revlon Color Stay. I love that shit, right? How do I keep my hair healthy looking? I do nothing. I don't know. I wash it like every couple of days. Usually every day that I work, I wash my hair. That's not true. I did wash it today and it's my day off. Um, I wash it when I feel like I need to wash it and I curl it with heat and I don't use heat protectant and I don't use hair masks and I use regular like Aussie shampoo and conditioner. So that's it. <laughs> Megan Jowers says, my mother died in 2013 from stage IVB cervical cancer. How, IVB? Or is that like five? I don't know things. How do you deal with depression after your mother died? Did you get depressed? I feel like I'm having to start my life over. I was an only child and she was a single mom, so I feel like I have no one else. How do you recommend I do this? I've changed almost everything in my life and I feel very alone most of the time. When my mom died, I was 16. Uh, I got mad depressed. Oh my god. You Oh, you wouldn't have liked me at 16. I dyed my hair black. I got a bunch of piercings. I started doing drugs. I started hanging out with punk kids. I started... Um, smoking. I was just, I was one of those kids that literally did the cliche of your parent dies and your life falls apart. That was me. How did I deal with the depression? Well, I didn't obviously. I just masked it with a shitload of drugs and friends and drinking a lot. And I, so don't do that. I honestly, as an adult, I don't really have the best answer for you because I don't know how old you are and I don't know the situation you you said that your mom was a single mom and you're an only child. It's a lot different than mine because I have a dad and I have a sister. So I had them to lean on. Uh, if you don't, I would say find some good friends and keep them close. And sometimes though, when you're depressed and you're upset about the loss of a family member, the last thing you want to do is be around people. And I completely get that. I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just wanted everybody to leave me the fuck alone. And I don't know what to tell you other than I don't know what makes you happy but friends can really help um like you said changing things up but you said you feel alone most of the time that's because a lot of people haven't experienced a loss like that um I would say find things that you like to do pick up hobbies take do do things for you try not to focus on it I don't think about my mom if I start thinking about her and reminiscing about her I cry my eyes out if I don't think about her, I'm good. So I literally, that's my coping technique. I don't even think about her. I try not to think about her face. I try not to think about her voice. I try not to think about the good memories we had because she was the best mom ever. So I try not to think about that stuff because it makes me cry and I don't like to cry and I don't like to be upset. So I just try to focus my energy on other things. I do makeup, I do Instagram, I do YouTube. I, I do all those other things and I, that's how I cope. But I'm sorry that you don't have anybody that you feel like you can lean on, but there's always us, and you can always talk to me if you need somebody to talk to. Chelsea K123 asks, I fucking love these videos. I look forward to them. Thank you. I like baking them. My question is, I've been with my boyfriend for almost five years, and our relationship is amazing. But in the last four months or so, I've gained about 20 pounds, and it's making me really insecure to the point where I don't even want him seeing me. And I've never been like this before. He doesn't mind at all. It's all in my head and it's driving me mad. Any tips on being more comfortable in my own skin, slightly larger than it used to be skin? Yeah, that's a tough one because I can tell you all day long that I have body confidence and body positivity, but at the end of the day, I still watch what I eat and I still be careful and I still care about losing weight and I feel really good about myself when I do. And when I gained 20 pounds, I felt like this. I... There's nothing I can tell you to make you more confident than to look at yourself in the mirror and realize that nobody else is looking at you and thinking you're fat. Pretty much guarantee that that's just you. Um, if you're unhappy with yourself, I would say sometimes finding that positivity within yourself is a good thing to do, but also sometimes changing what you don't like. So 
find new clothes to accentuate your new body. I'm not the most confident person in the world, so it's really hard for me to give you advice on like how to be confident because I would be constantly pulling at my clothes and feeling like so uncomfortable in my own skin. But I realized that my husband, or your boyfriend, doesn't look at me like that. Wouldn't be with me if he didn't think I was pretty or if he didn't love me more than what my outer appearance looked like. I am hideous naked and I'm talking like on a scale of hideous to fucking disturbing to look at, I am like right, right here. But I still get naked in front of my husband. I don't care. He can see me naked all day long because I can see that when he looks at me, he's not seeing that. So your guy's not looking at you like that. Don't even worry about it. It's all in your head. If you don't like it, you can try to lose some weight if you want to. And if that'll make you feel better about yourself, even just the fact that you are trying to do it. If you don't want to do that and you honestly don't care, well then just look in the mirror, dress your shape and try to, when those thoughts pop into your head, like I'm a, try to realize that person over there that you think is looking at you because you think they think you're fat, they're thinking about how fat they are. So just don't even worry about it. Tatumable, Tatumable <laughs> asks, is there any possibility to get you to Finland in August to be my doula? We don't really have doulas in Finland, just a midwife in the birth, and I really think having someone like you there would be so amazing and helpful. You're awesome, and I love how straightforward you are. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't think that's ever going to be a possibility, but I can tell you, uh, midwives are just as amazing as doulas. Uh, well, they're better, to be honest with you. Doulas are a, an, a very amazing part of having a good natural birth, but I think you'll do just great with uh, just a midwife, because a lot of times they have midwives assistants. I don't know about Finland. I know they do in America. They have midwives assistants, so there's always like two people there anyway. But, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I totally would if you were like in the state I live in, but you're not even in the country I live in. Faith Maxwell asks, me and my sister actually adore you. We want to, we want a beanie that says, <laughs> hashtag Chinsley. Uh, my question has to do with marriage. What keeps your relationship strong? Do you feel of bitterness and resentment ever pop up? And so, if so, how do you deal with it? Thanks so much. You're quite awesome. I love you guys so much. You make me smile. Feelings of bitterness and resentment ever pop up in marriage? Of course, yeah. Like right now, my husband's on nights and I'm doing all the housework because he's sleeping all day long and working all night. And I literally like, every time I'm doing the dish, I'm like, you fucking asshole. I try to keep in perspective. He's working his ass off. He's working, you know, he, last week he worked like 75 hours and I, and I didn't and I had days off and I'm recording YouTube videos. So I need to keep things in perspective. Keep the relationship happy. Uh, do things for one another. Uh, if... I keep him happy, he keeps me happy. So, you know, if that means doing something for him that I don't want to do, like if he wants me to do the laundry and I'm like literally the last fucking thing I want to do is his laundry, I do his laundry because he'll be happier with me and like he'll pick me up breakfast the next morning. So kind of like trying to weigh out the whole thing. Yeah, if there's a rent resentment and stuff in marriage, well shit, yeah, there is. But there is that when you're not married either. Marriage is a piece of paper that says you're fucking stuck with me and we can do our taxes and get more of a write-off. Other than that, it's the same as when we were dating and was there resentment and hate and also love and amazement? All of that is there. I think it just comes with marriage. But most of the time, it's just love, most of the time. Very Serious Breakfast Time asks, Hey Christy, my question for you is about your hair and how your boss reacted to it and how it impacts your work. As far as I know, my place of work has no rules in, re in regarding hair colors and I've been wanting to ask my supervisor about it, but I'm worried they might think I'm a professional or something. I work as a certified veterinary technician in a humane society and I've been dealing with some compassion fatigue. I've been wanting to do something for myself and I think a fun hair color would be awesome. Thanks, you're so gorgeous and your videos are like a warm hug. Oh my God, what a sweet thing to say. Oh my God. My hair, my, I never asked. I just dyed my hair. I just came to work one day and I had purple hair. Um, they all love it. Everybody there loves my hair. My boss, they all said my fi their favorite hair was my mermaid hair. They did not once say anything negative to me about it. Clients don't mind. Um, I, if I only get positive feedback, if any, um, and it's never, I did have one guy say it looked like I have gangrene, but he was also like 90 and lived through all the wars. I can tell you, I have only had positive experiences with it for some reason, and this may happen to you too. Colored hair makes me feel so freaking confident. I feel like 
the most confident person in the world when I have colored hair. I'm dyeing my hair next week. A really, really fun color, and you guys will see that then. But uh, I, I have, I'm so confident when I have colored hair, and that's what I really loved about it, and it's been no problem in my working. I, sometimes I feel a little unprofessional when like a client is asking if they can make payments. I'm telling them no, and they look at me like, Oh really little idiot fucking green head? You're gonna tell me I can't make payments? Let me see your boss. And I'm like, um, I am the boss today. Sometimes it doesn't um, look very professional, but I don't fucking care. <laughs> because it's my hair. Hair is a color. Um, and if they can't get past that to see my professional side and the fact that I'm actually a smart person and I work in a really serious environment, well, then they're a little bit in, t you know, fucking 1971. 1971? How about 1928? That was a really old time. 71 was a lot more understanding. Do it for yourself. If your bosses are okay with it, certainly do it. It is so much fun to have colored hair. Leslie and Natalie asks, any chance one of these days you could do a cleaning routine for your face and the products you use? Well, I certainly can. Uh, I'm, it's the same thing that I've always done. Um, I am the worst at it. I really don't use a lot of makeup products for my skin, you guys. I I eat a low-carb diet and my skin stays clear. And I use moisturizer sometimes, but I can certainly do a video on it. Linz Roy asks, what are five products you couldn't live without? By the way, I love your videos. Thanks so much. <laughs> five products or five types of products? My Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade, my new favorite foundation of life, the Rimmel Lasting Finish um, 25 Hour with Comfort Serum Foundation. Um, false lashes, concealer, and I would do MAC Pro Longwear Concealer and House of Lashes Iconic, even though right now I'm wearing Siren, but Iconic are like my staple lashes. Um, hold on, eyeshadow. And my um, NYC Liquid Liner, because I love winged eyeliner. And if I can have winged liner and lashes and like good skin and stuff every day, then I'd be good. Oh, what about contour? Fuck, I can't, I can't do this. Ashley Nicole Camacho asks, how did you start your YouTube channel? Was it hard? I'm about to start my own in a few weeks and I just want some advice. Um, no, it was not hard. It, I thought into it way more than I probably should have. I was like so concerned about everything. I was so concerned that I had the right lighting and the right everything. And blah, blah, blah. Just be yourself. If you look back at my old videos, which you probably shouldn't do, you'll see that I was so not myself. I was trying to be somebody else. I was like trying to be another big celebrity. When you realize that that doesn't work, then you'll start to fall into it. So you'll make your own mistakes in the beginning. Just trudge on through, keep going, realize it is a slow road. Unless you're like fantastically amazing at everything, it's a slow growing road, so don't get discouraged. Elliot and Mommy asks, Hey Christy, I love your videos, but my question is, I'm a teen mother, I've got my own YouTube channel, and I wanted to incorporate makeup and beauty into my channel. I love makeup, and I just don't know how to make a makeup channel successful. What are some tips on making good quality videos that you think people would actually watch? Good lighting, good editing, nice jump cuts, um, be good at doing makeup, don't ramble on and on, and I'm the worst at that. Um, good HD quality and good sound. I would say those are the most important things. Look at what you like in a YouTube video and try to replicate that in your own without being that person. What I mean by that is if you like jump cut editing, do that in your own videos. And a lot of people do because it keeps the mind interested. It's fast, it's to the point. Um, you'll notice that in some of my videos I do it, some of them I don't. I don't do it as much. Like this video, there's hardly any jump cut editing because I'm rambling on and on. So I would say those are the most important things to having a successful channel in general. Keep the audience watching, but don't be too animated and too blah. If it grows, it will. Um, if, if you're authentic and you post on a regular schedule, do a regular schedule and stick to it and, and, and it will work. L. Levi asks, I graduated college last year. Before I even had a chance to take a break, I got my first job and I've been there a full or I've been there for a year now, full time. I used to be part time and I had more time to dedicate to my YouTube videos, social media, etc. Last week I broke down. The stress got to me. Being full time plus trying to film slash social media and still see your friends, family, boyfriend is very hard. Not to mention all of the other stuff that you try to fit in. My sister and mom recently told me that my content hasn't been as good as it used to be. I totally see where they're coming from. 
it is hard to be creative under so much stress. I need to be fully relaxed and stress free to con create something I like, and I'm sure you know. Anyways, my question is super long. I just don't know if I should continue making this, making videos, and etc., or stop. I feel like my old videos have my videos have been boring, and I don't know. I feel as though I'm losing my passion. I'm not for sure if it's because I don't have time to dedicate. Not that I need to say this, but I would love to your honest, raw opinion. I won't get offended, even if you took a quick peek at one of my videos. Why is my shit so boring? Uh, so frustrated. Regardless, I'm taking week two weeks off just to relax and get my shit together. Thanks in advance. Let's look at your channel. I don't know what your family's talking about. So I just watched like pieces of two of your videos. First, let me say, your editing is really nice. Your lighting is nice. Your videos are nice. Your jump cuts are nice. Uh, you're pretty and you're well-spoken and you don't ramble on. I don't know what they're talking about. The only suggestion that I have for you, because I think your channel has a lot of potential and I think that it's really great. I mean, I think that the video I just watched, your February favorites 2015, it, it looks really nice. So I don't see what they're saying. The only thing I would suggest the only thing, and it's not me being cr cr criticizing you by any means, but what I look for in a channel is not necessarily information on makeup products because, like, I'm gonna go off of myself of watching other beauty people. I watch Patrick Starr because I like Patrick Starr. I like the personality he brings, I like the jokes he tells, I also like the makeup that he shows, but it's him that I watch. I like certain people for certain different things. Now, I would love to see your personality in the videos. I'm not saying that you're not because I think that showing makeup products and stuff, like you do an excellent job at that. Your video is really well edited. You have really good editing. Everything looks really nice. Your music, everything is really nice. I'm telling you that truly, I know how difficult editing, editing videos is and you did a great job. The one thing I would like is if, show us who you are, do videos on who you are and I swear to you, once you start doing those, your passion will come back for YouTube or it'll fizzle out because you realize you're not interested in it. When I started doing raw advice, when I started doing uh, vlogs, when I started showing myself and not so much just my makeup side, everything changed for me for YouTube. My YouTube started growing, people started noticing my videos, I started getting a trillion more comments, people started asking questions, people found me and realized that I'm a real person who also likes makeup, not a person who likes makeup and that's what I am and there's nothing else. I'm not saying that's what you're like because your videos are nice, but I would say if you were to put out videos that explain who you are and tell stories about yourself and be just honest and just talk as if you're talking to a friend and not as if you're um, just explaining products because products are cool but when they're added with a little bit of flair of your personality that's when it's really really it's an awesome video then and that's what I look for in people but I can tell you that that you're doing you're doing all of the technical stuff and everything else really right and FYI I've already watched one of your videos before without you even knowing I watched your um, this one the zombie nails one Look at this editing, you guys. She does an amazing job. You should go check out our YouTube channel. For this tutorial, you will need artificial nails, a nail file, a brown and Look black shadow, a paintbrush, a red, yellow, black, and brown nail polish, face paint, a cosmetic wedge, tweezers, and nail clippers. That is excellent. Excellent editing, I'm saying. Blood, excellent. It's not strip. boring at all. Not boring at all. Keep it up, girl. I would stick with it. If you like it, stick with it. But if you're fizzling out and you don't, if it's not your passion anymore, you don't like it, well, then you don't have to do it. Nobody's forcing you. But I'm telling you right now that you've got something here and you've already got a good base of a following and you're, you're everything's really nice. I'm telling you, you're, you're, you have, this is a great, this is a great YouTube channel. So stick with it. April Sings asks, hey, Christy, thank you so much for answering my question. I really like this guy, but I've never met him. We have talked on Facebook a lot, and he is friends with one of my friends. He has recently completely shut me out. We have each other's phone numbers, and I have tried texting him and messaging him on Facebook, but he won't answer. I thought we had something, but now it's like I don't exist. Should I just forget about him? Is it a lost cause? My quick and short answer, because the answer is yes. I would leave him alone, and I wouldn't talk to him anymore. That's not to say that what you guys had or what you thought was was there it wasn't um but he may have moved on and i would say with messaging him and talking to him and he's not messaging you back i would absolutely 100 percent leave him alone don't talk to him anymore if he messages you then go from there but if he does not 
leave him alone, I would, because he's obviously, he's making it clear that he doesn't even find the time to message you back, so good riddance to him. Sarah Louise says, the question, I find that I'm struggling at the moment with working out what color eyeshadows work with each other. God, can I read? And then what colors work with my skin tone? Do you have any tips on how to work this out? It's so frustrating because half the time I end up looking like I'm deathly ill when I try using dark colors or coppers, etc., which are meant to be good for blue eyes. So if you have blue eyes, I would stick with those colors, which look really nice. Um, but I would wear uh, black on my waterline, try to do a wing, and put on lashes. I'm telling you right now, an eye look that makes you look sick can be immediately made glam by putting on lashes and wearing a black on your waterline and smoking it out. So I would say finding colors, yes, you can look up colors that are best for blue eyes, or you could say, fuck all that and just wear whatever color you like. Try cool tones. If you're looking sickly, you might be trying too warm of tones. So try cooler tones on your blue eyes and that might work better for you. Allie Crystal asks, are you good at drawing, painting, other types of art? I feel like I'm quite good at makeup, but terrible at other art. I feel like in order to really improve, like with doing characters or body painting or whatever, I need those type of skills. Um, I am a painter and a drawer, and I'm a singer, and I'm artistic in pretty much everything in my life. Um, not to say like, I'm so good at doing all those things. Uh, but I am artistic. I always have been. I was like, I did sculpting in high school. I did, um, I've painted pictures for, uh, my family and my friends. I used to do charcoal drawings. I'm decently good with that and now I'm really getting into special effects makeup and stuff. But you don't have to be good at that stuff to be good at makeup. Uh, just learning the techniques can change everything for you. Nicole Beth Smith says, I love your voice and decided to have a go at your mind with a question. A year ago, me and my fiance chose adoption for our son. We have a great relationship with the adoptive parents and communicate often. People were confused on why we chose adoption. We were committed but would struggle financially. When the truth is, I wasn't mentally stable enough to raise a child. I'm rambling. My question is, what are your thoughts on adoption? Do you think that it's appropriate time? Do you think there is an appropriate time that we should wait until we have another child? Would you choose an open or a closed adoption? Thanks. Oh, wow, that's really tough for me because I've never gone through any adoption process. So I don't really know. I think adoption is amazing and wonderful. And if you've done it, kudos to you. I think that is so cool. And every child deserves a loving home. And if you've given that, then age and all of that other stuff and timing, none of that matters. If you have a loving home and you're secure and stable, I think those things are really important. Uh, before having another child, I would say just whenever you feel ready. If you don't feel ready, don't have another child because you can't take that back. <laughs> if you want your um, son to have a sibling now, sure, get, have another child or adopt another child. That That's certainly within the realm of possibilities of things that you can definitely do. If you don't feel ready though, I would certainly wait until you definitely feel ready. Uh, it's hard for me to give you an answer because I never feel ready, which is why I have no children. Danielle Elizabeth asks, with the whole God belief thing, do you worry and believe that non-believers like your husband will go to hell? Uh, yeah, I do, but uh, I just continue being a positive, God-believing force in his life and hope that one day he will see that and want to do the same. He is super non-believer, so I don't ever see that happening, but maybe one day it'll change. Maybe he'll be on his deathbed and he'll pray to Jesus that Jesus forgive him, and maybe that's how it works. Maybe he'll see the positive changes in me and believe in Jesus that way. Or maybe he'll burn in hell and that's the way it is. I don't know what's going to happen because without a doubt in my mind, or because nobody really know knows what's gonna happen. I don't really know if he's gonna burn in hell for not believing, or I, I honestly, it's hard for me to know. Um, but yeah, I'm still gonna try and get him to believe because that scares the shit out of me. TJ Melissa Hopkins says, when my kids get older and I start having more free time, I may want to find some kind of job to keep me busy. Is being a birth doula something you would recommend? It totally depends. Um, you're gonna, be at births for a long time. When I say that, I mean you're on call, so whenever the mom goes into labor, you're at her, the birth with her. And if you're prepared to stay somewhere for 48 hours while she's in labor, then certainly. Um, it is not quite what I expected in the fact that I knew that was the case, but it's a lot different when you're living it. And if you feel prepared to be that emotional support, it is draining. Ning. I'm gonna tell you it is so draining. It is so amazing and do totally worth it and you feel great having been there for somebody during their birth but oh my god is it draining. If their birth is six hours long, shit, you could be a doula all day but when a birth is 47 hours long and you haven't slept for 47 hours because you have to be there for the mom, even if she's sleeping you feel a little weird sleeping because you like feel like you're like 
oh, I'm just gonna go take a nap. I'm a little tired. It's like she's pushing out a baby and you're like a little tired. So all the births that I've been doing was like 48 hours long. Bitch never sleeps. So I'm like sitting there like tripping in the corner. But I can tell you, if you are prepared for all of that, it's definitely worth it. Um, if you want to be donor certified, then you're going to have to go to school for that. I did that and I never got the certification because I actually went to births and realized I was not... Um, I was not the best person to be a doula. Not that I didn't like it. I'm just, it's just not my thing. So try it out. See if you like it. Attend some friends' births. I'm sure you're going to have friends that get pregnant. And if they like, they would like to have you there, try it out and see if you like it. And you'll know then. Um, but no, it is emotionally draining. It's physically draining. And they need you to be there for them the whole time. And if you're a very shy person, it's probably not for you. I'm a little shy in different situations. And, um, you, which you wouldn't really believe, but uh, trust me. Uh, and I can tell you that you can't be shy here because there's naked people walking around having babies. Quiet as a Mouse says, What do you think of beauty gurus who ask for free stuff from companies or followers? Or who list P.O. boxes so they can receive letters, but usually receive packages and do package opening videos? What about those who do not say slash list things that they've been sent or the video is sponsored? What are your thoughts on the whole Lime Crime drama that went down recently? And... How much money do you make on average for a video per slash a month? Oh, these are good questions. Okay, what do I feel about beauty gurus who get free stuff from companies or followers? I think free stuff from companies is amazing. It's part of building a bigger brand of yourself on YouTube. I've gotten sent free stuff from companies before and I fucking love it. Free stuff is amazing. And, um, you know, I think that the stigma around people online not shouldn't be able to get paid or shouldn't get free stuff or so I think that's dumb because that's how we make money if you like watching our videos then just understand that's how, that's a part of it but understand that with me for one I've have hardly got anything free sent to me because I turned down most of it because I don't want it because I don't want to have to do a positive review on something that if I don't like it then I don't want to do a review on it but understand that we only do, well I, I'm going to go with myself here, I only do reviews on things that I like and support anyway. So you're never, even if I got sent for free, I'm not going to mention it if I don't like it. I got this sent to me for free. The Tarte Beauty in the Box, in the Buff, like makeup. I've used it once and I hate it and I've never reviewed it for you guys because I didn't like it. And it was free. I totally got it free sent to me from a company. I also got the Tarte Maracuja oil and I don't like that as well. Um, just So just understand that just because somebody's getting free stuff sent to them doesn't mean anything negative at all. It's just really great actually that the companies will do that and will pay people to review products they're already interested in. Uh, as far as um, receiving packages and doing packaging opening videos, I think if a viewer wants to send a YouTuber a package or letters, I think that's great. Uh, it's totally up to them. Now I think if they're like, please send me packages, that's a little funny. It's like, why are you doing that? But I'm going to say that I even thought about getting a P.O. box not because I want everybody to send me stuff, but because if somebody did, I think I would cherish it for the rest of my life. I'm not going to do it, but maybe one day I will. But I don't think there's anything weird about it. What are my thoughts on the whole Lime Crime drama that went down recently? Uh, if you guys don't know the Lime Crime drama, I'm not going to get into it. You can look up uh, oh dear, do dear com or whatever. It's like a Tumblr thing. But what I can tell you is, uh, in to sum up, Lime Crime... Uh, basically had a huge breach of their website and a bunch of people lost a bunch of money and uh, when people were bringing it to Lime Crime's attention, uh, Doe Deer was like blocking people and telling them, you know, that they were assholes and stuff. So what do I feel about the company? What do I feel about the whole scandal? I own Lime Crime products and I love them. I love them to death. Am I going to be repurchasing from Lime Crime? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I'm not one of those people that's incredibly passionate. Uh, I'll let you guys know, proceed at your own caution. If you wanna buy Lime Crime, nobody's fucking judging you on my end. I don't give a shit what you buy. Um, I'm not gonna be one of those people that stands up against the company. I had nothing bad happen to me and I had purchased a Lime Crime product like d right during that whole thing, but I purchased with my PayPal, so I didn't notice any issues at all. What I can tell you is if you don't like it, don't buy from them. Uh, I don't. I'm probably not going to buy from them for a while. I think that her at, the way that she was was incredibly fucking shady. And I think that she should have just come right out and said what was going on. And not probably block people and call people assholes. But, you know, maybe she's just like that. I don't know the girl. I don't know if she's weird or not. She's She's got a really cool company. I don't know anything about the repackaging and stuff. I feel like people love... I mean, it's not, I'm not going to call it like a bandwagon, but... 
as of now, everybody is now jumping on every company's ass about everything, and it's because of the whole Lime Crime scandal. I've noticed people doing it with LA Splash Cosmetics, like, oh, I didn't get my package, oh, it's been a week. Well, get off their fucking ass about it. They're really busy, they're like a fucking company that's trying, to, they're up and coming, they're trying to do the best they can. Lime Crime is another story, whatever. I honestly, I just don't even think about it or and or care. I'm still... I'm going to use the velveteens that I have, but I'm not going to talk about them because I don't like hearing about it. I don't want people to tell me to stop using Lime Crime. I don't want to deal with any of that. But how much money do you make on average for a video per month? I make fucking jack shit on anything. I make like $100 a month on YouTube. Uh, I will be completely honest with you. I could show you how much I've made this month, like $100. Um, and yeah, it's nice. It supports my makeup habit. I usually spend like $100 a month on makeup and I come out even. I don't make a lot of money. There are some YouTubers that make millions of dollars and there are some that, like me that make nothing. Um, there are some in between. Uh, so maybe one day I'll be making a good amount of money, but right now I make fucking nothing. <laughs> Taylor Nico asks, I know it largely depends on your relationship, but I want to know your thoughts on what age and maturity level a couple should reach before getting married. I'm 22 and I've been with my boyfriend for four years, but I still want to wait until we're a little older, more financially independent and stable when we will both graduate college in May. I ask because it seems like so many friends of mine are getting engaged who met their significant others like two years ago. Uh, I think it totally depends on each person's situation, like you said. But um, my husband and I were together for four or for five years when we got engaged. We got no. We got married five years later. We got engaged like three or four, four years later. We got really engaged for like a year. Um, totally depends. I wish we would have waited to get married because I, my style has changed so much. My wedding would have been so much prettier had I gotten married when I was a bit older and more financially stable. And if you want to have a nice wedding and you want to spend money on something like that, I would definitely say wait until you are financially stable. Um, I think it has nothing to do with age and more to do with when you feel like you're ready. And don't let any of your engaged friends pressure you because the later you wait, the the more you can see the shit they did at their weddings that you didn't like and then you know what you want to do at your wedding. So uh, marriage is wholly based on, like I said, marriage is a piece of paper. If you live with the guy now and you love him and you guys are together, I mean that's enough. It's exactly the same as marriage. Marriage is just that bond you guys make saying that you declare your love in front of everybody and if you want to do that now or if you want to wait five years, that's totally up to you. Jelena W says, I would really appreciate your opinion on this. I decided after I get my PhD degree to pack up and come to Washington, preferably in a smaller city. I'm from Southern Europe. Before I find a job in worst case scenario, I might pass two to three months. So how much startup money would I approximately need to survive? A ballpark. I know there are info websites and all, but what can you tell me as a citizen? Okay, well that'd be cool if you come to Washington. Washington's a beautiful, amazing place and I love it with all my heart. I would say rent wise, it's expensive. Uh, I would say uh, to budget at least $1,000 a month just for rent. Food wise, I would say you probably need to save up two to three months. Oh, fuck. If you budget out $10,000, I would say, because your rent is going to be, and that's probably really high, but I think that's shooting on the good end where you're not going to be like stop suffering and eating top ramen every day. I would say to, um, your rent's going to be probably at least $1,000 a month, depending on where you live. If you live in a smaller city, because even where I live, I live in a really small town and, um, our mortgage is $1,300 a month. Uh, I know people that live right around the area, even in smaller places, apartments around here are like eight or $900 a month. So you're gonna wanna, I would say budget around $1,000 a month and that's for a moderate place to live. Um, I would say food, depending on the type of person, I would say budget out $500. i am shooting on the high end because that can't hurt. Um, gas, uh, that's another 300 bucks a month. Um, I would say um, utilities, so you're already looking at like $2,000. Um, if you wanna get, you know, and that's just to live. I'm not, I'm not talking about having fun or doing anything else or any other expenses that may pop up like car stuff or, you know. So I would say right now you're already at $2,000 a month to live by yourself. Um, it depends on how much money you're making, but I would say um, two for six, eight thousand dollars if you want to last for two three months. But ten would be better. I know that's a lot of money, but I'm being realistic. Washington's not cheap. You can live cheap depending on where you live, and if you want to get like a studio, you can rent something for like five hundred bucks a month. But I'm just trying to give you worst case scenario. Christy. 20005 says, I would like to know your opinion on my situation. I've been with my husband for seven years and we've been through our ups and downs. But recently I found out he's been texting this girl for five months. So I looked at our phone bills and it was a lot of texting and picture messages. I confronted him about it and he says it never went further than texting. My question is, I don't think he would ever physically cheat, but in my eyes, texting is cheating. What are your opinions or what are your options? Well, that is cheating in my opinion. Um, 
He was doing it behind your back. You found out because of a phone bill. He said it never went further than texting. Who is this girl? How did he meet her? Why are they texting? Why are they sending pictures? What are the pictures of? Those things, I'm not a jealous person, but those things are unacceptable in a marriage, in my opinion. I absolutely think that that is a fucking no-no. And if he thinks that that's okay, well, then what else does he think is okay? He says that it didn't go any further than that, but that's not right. It's not right to be texting somebody else. It's fine to text somebody else, but it's not fine to do it behind your significant other's back and then have them find out about it from a secondary source. So I would definitely say, in my opinion, I don't think I could um, trust him very well after that because obviously he lied to you about that. And what what made him do that? What? So I would have a serious conversation about like, what? Why were you texting her? For one, what were you texting her? Um, and what are the pictures? What is this? What is this even about? I would question the shit out of him. And then if he just gave me some roundabout answer like, oh, it was just never. No, no. You're you're gonna tell me right now what it was and if you don't tell me right now and you don't fucking d discover what's going on right now this is over and that's me I, I at least maybe I'm not as tolerant as other people but I would not take that no 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 Amber Bradley asks what is your favorite Lana Del Rey song her voice calms me when I'm stressed Ooh, my favorite Lana Del Rey song that is really hard really really hard I think no it's not hard my favorite Lana Del Rey song is Yayo. Giselle Monique says uh, how is your annoying cat that pees all over the floor? Um, she's still annoying and she's still pissing all over the floor. Now she's doing it on the carpet too, so that's really fun. Rebecca Shores MUA asks, um, since I want this thing to stay a weekly thing, I figure I should ask a question. What is the favorite tea if you drink tea? Well, I would love to drink tea, but I hate tea. I've tried and tried and tried time and time again. The only way I like tea is with cream and sugar and that's just not good. And I have to like literally dump shit into it to make it drinkable for me and I still don't like it. I can tolerate it. I've tried iced tea, I've tried hot tea, I've tried flavored teas. There's nothing, there's nothing I can do. To me, I don't understand why people like tea. It just tastes like plants. Like I, I literally don't get it. I wish I could be one of the cool tea people, but it's just plant water. Elsa Ray asks, wedding advice, what to do, what not to do. I am in my first wedding party and I cannot believe the amount of stress and drama that's already gone down. It makes me not want to have a wedding and that sucks. Thankfully, I'm not quite there yet, but I know I'll be doing the thing within the next couple years. Any tips would be awesome. Okay, uh, wedding advice, what to do, what not to do. I have so much of this. What to do. Hire people to do shit for you. Try not to do what I did and budget friendly wedding because you'll look back on it and regret it massively. Don't make your own food. Hire a caterer. Pick an amazing location. Don't be bridezilla. Don't stress about the small things. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't worry so much about your fucking arrangements and worry more about the experience of the guests. I was so poor when I got married that I paid for everything myself and I had no extra money to do anything and I made all my own food. Um, the only thing I really spent money on was my dress which now that I look back on could have been more simple and it would have been better and the venue, I should have spent more money on the venue. The venue is everything. Find a place that is incredible and you don't have to spend a butt fucking ton of money on your on your decorations because the, the surroundings are beautiful. Um, don't worry so much about all the little things like, I was so worried about my centerpieces. Nobody fucking cared about my centerpieces. They're not paying attention to your centerpieces. And I spent money on that stuff. I spent time. I spent stuff worrying. I couldn't even enjoy my day because I was worried so much about the little things. This just, just the little things. I wouldn't have alcohol at my wedding ever again if I did, even though probably nobody would want to come. But that was awful because some people got in a fight and it ruined the whole ending night of my wedding and I'll never talk about it, I'll never tell you the story because it fucking ruins my life. I can tell you, try to be as stress free as possible, try to save up as much money as you can so that you can hire other people to do it for you because I can tell you that the most stressed out I was is because I was cooking food for my wedding the night before till like midnight and I had to decorate my wedding that morning of because I'm a control freak and I couldn't trust anybody else to do it for me. I didn't get a relaxing morning drinking mimosas with my friends. I was decorating and being a control freak and tripping out all morning and then I was late 15 minutes late for my own wedding. So don't do that stuff. So someone messaged me this question and she messaged it to me privately through Facebook so I'm not going to say her name but I am going to read the question. So 
Me and my boyfriend of three years love each other very much, but he is very lazy. I know he cares a lot about me, and I honestly don't mind doing stuff for him, like washing, cooking. In fact, I enjoy it, but it never seemed to get much in return. He's also become quite negative lately and never suggests we do anything together. And when we do stuff, I suggest it's always with indifference. We've had several conversations about this, and he always sees it as me warning him I will break up with him and just agrees with whatever I say without really taking it in. We broke up for a week a year ago over something different and irrelevant to this, and he was heartbroken and went to extreme lengths to get me back. So I know he really does love me, but it's hard to see when he's not forced to show it. Another thing is that we used to talk via text all day when we were getting to know each other, but now that we live together, he has stopped talking to me during the day. And when he does, it's very blunt and ends the conversation. I'm demisexual, which means I'm only sexually attracted to someone I feel a connection with. Not knowing where I stand all the time really affects my ability to feel attracted to him even though I love him to pieces. I've said it a million times, but we honestly do love each other, and I don't know what to do to improve this. I know you'll probably just say to talk to each other, but as I said, I have tried that. Any ideas? Thanks. I'm going to be honest with you. I asked my husband, and he didn't have an answer. I asked my sister, and she didn't have an answer. I asked myself, and my answer is, you already said it, talk to him, which you've done, so I'm not going to give you that answer. The answer I have is, it almost sounds to me like he's, I don't want to say depressed, but it does almost sound like he has some sort of mental, I'm not saying mental issues like he's schizophrenic. What I mean is, it sounds like he's got something deeper going on. A lot of times when people become indifferent towards everything, they just want to lay around, they don't really give a shit, they're kind of lazy. Uh, that's just who they are. I don't know if it's depression. I hate to say depression because I hate to be like just chalk it up to that they're depressed. To be honest with you, your boyfriend or husband, I can't remember if you said he was your husband or not, he sounds a lot like mine. Um, if I ask my husband what he wants to do, he doesn't know. Uh, he doesn't really care. Do whatever I want to do. Do whatever. Come home. Just do whatever. Um, doesn't really pick up either. Just kind of the same. So it's very similar relationship. However, I can find myself attracted to people that I don't find a connection with. I would say... It almost sounds to me like he's got some sort of either depression issue or that he is unhappy in some aspect of his life or maybe that's just how he is. Was he different before and then he recently changed to be like that? Because that might that might change my answer, I suppose. Um, but my husband and I have had many fights about that where I, I'm, I'm like, are you happy? And he's like, I don't know. And the answer is, I said, do you have a passion in life? What do you want to do? I don't know. Um, do you have any hobbies that you really like? No, I don't know. My husband is like that. He's just kind of like, meh. He's indifferent about most everything. And some people that makes crazy, but to me, I just get my way all the time. So it doesn't bother me none. Uh, but I can say it's really hard because you've already tried talking to him. It's not getting you anywhere. And you said that he just feels like you're breaking up with him, but just let him know. I mean, I honestly feel like you don't give a fuck. Like you don't care whether I stay or whether I go. And some people that drives crazy. Some people are just too agreeable and too eh. And maybe you love him, but maybe, maybe that part of your relationship is going to be the strain there because I can tell you the longer you're together, that kind of thing's just going to make you nuts. I don't mind doing stuff for my husband either, but when it's an every time thing and when it, you know, that's when it starts to become a problem. So even when I read that question to my husband, he goes, Christy, did you ask yourself a raw advice question about your husband? Because it sounds so much like him. If you, if it's hard for you to stay sexually attracted to him because you're demisexual, I would tell him that. Tell him, you know, when you don't give me anything, it's hard for me to give back to you. You glad you've already talked to him about it, but the conversation should end in either a positive or splitting ways. Because if you're unhappy with the way things are going and he's not willing to change or to give you a reason why he's like that, then he he's, at least needs to explain to you why he's like that. Ask him, are you happy? Are you depressed? Do you feel like we have a connection, you know? And I would ask those things because to be honest with you, I can't tell you why he's doing that, but it would make me fucking crazy. And Zach and I have had conversations about that and usually ends well. And then we end up starting to do things together and he'll suggest things and then we'll do stuff and then it'll be, it comes good again. And, and then if it starts kind of regressing back in the way it was, then you have those conversations again. That's really the best I can tell you is that I can't, offer any other suggestion than talking to him because the other suggestion is leaving him. Because if you're unhappy and you can't find that attraction towards him because he shows no initiative to be anything other than agreeable, then 
then that that is what it is and I don't feel he will change unless he seeks counseling because sometimes there are things emotionally going on inside of people and when you ask why that's going on like why do you feel that way why do you never want to do anything why are you always so agreeable maybe the answer is I don't know why am I like that maybe I should go see somebody and my husband even admitted that one time he goes I don't know I'm, I just feel off I feel depressed or I feel blah you know and some people just don't have that drive I do I always want to be doing everything I want to go to YouTube events I want to go on vacation I want to do this I want to do that and if it weren't for me those things wouldn't get done but that's just how we are in a relationship so I hope that answered your question well but I don't think it probably did I thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comments of this video I will try to answer every single one of them I'm sorry if I missed any but if I did just try and direct me to it somehow and I will certainly answer it if I did miss it I did not mean to uh, but I do thank you guys for watching. I thank you for asking questions. And if you guys would like to, and I would really like you to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It will update you when I put out new videos, which is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, if you'd like to, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Those are all at Christie. On Instagram, I post every single day of 2015. I've been doing some high-quality special effects makeup. I've been doing lots of different things. So follow me over there if you want to see some cool stuff. I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Bottom lashes. This will be my first time ever using bottom lashes, but we're gonna see how it goes, and I will be right back. Yes, I'm watching Twilight in the background because I'm a girl and I like that kind of shit sometimes. But I just want to say, my left eye is so dumb. It won't stop watering. I don't understand. For for the last two and a half weeks, this eye, constant watering. It feels like there's something pokey in it on my lash line. Maybe I have lashes growing back or something, but it is making me fucking crazy. And this is the finished look.